When you plant your crop, you need to know where the, your crops are going to get water, and that is what you are going to look at in this course. In this irrigation course, uh, we are going to look at various aspects of the irrigation course. And one thing we are going to talk about is the introduction. And uh, in the introduction part, we are going to look at the advantages of uh, doing the irrigation. We are going to look at some of the target crop and also we are going to look at uh, the cost analysis. Um, we are also going to look at uh, the water sources. And uh, of course when you are doing irrigation you must know your source of water. And one of the source water sources we are talking about is uh, uh, the borehole. We are also going to look at uh, the river. You could be having a shallow well or maybe a dam or maybe you could be, be near a lake. All those are the water sources we are, we are talking about. So which may be involved even uh, what we can call water harvesting. Because if you have a, maybe a short well or maybe a water pan, uh, we will be talking about water harvesting. So once you harvest that water, uh, it will be important because uh, that is the water you are going to use uh, to do the irrigation. And of course, uh, when you are looking at this water, uh, it, is it is also important to look at the quality of this water. And the quality of this water, uh, mainly we are going to talk about uh, is your water salty. Uh, is it alkaline? So we are going to look at that. We are going to look at the water, uh, water quality. And also we are also looking, uh, going to look at uh, water testing. Because uh, uh, the water that you are going to irrigate your crop, it is very important so that uh, it can be able to be of good quality. So that when you are doing the irrigation in your, uh, in your farm, it doesn't, uh, maybe that water doesn't destroy your soil and also uh, doesn't affect your crop. So it is very important to check uh, the quality of water. We are going to look at uh, irrigation via a borehole and uh, when we are going to look about uh, irrigation using a, a borehole as a source of water we are going to look at uh, uh, the next thing we are going to look apart from the water quality uh, we are going to look at the land demarcation how you, d you demarcate your land uh, you know you set up uh, the different sections uh, how you do the beds uh, of course, uh, you have to, because it, it will be drip irrigation, you have to do, uh, to know how to prepare the beds. So that's the other section you are going to look at, uh, because uh, the, your land has to be arranged into blocks, so that uh, those blocks can form as the irrigation sections. And uh, of course, uh, after we look at the, how, you, how you demarcate the land, you are going to look at uh, the borehole itself. Uh, and uh, at the borehole, you are going to look at uh, the connections that are there. There's also the water, pu the water pu pump, and also we have the main pump, the main pump, pump, the main pipe, and uh, the main pipe is one that uh, usually when water is pumped from the borehole goes to the main tank, and of course now from the borehole we are going to look at the the, the tank, uh, the water tank, the main water tank, and this is the main water tank that uh, uh, acts as a reservoir for water. So when water is pumped from the borehole, goes to the water tank, and uh, there at the water tank. Um, we are going to look at the capacity of the water tank. We are going to look at uh, filtering that usually happens there. We are going to look at some of the connections that are, are there, and also we are going to look at the main uh, the main pump, pump, pipe, the main pipe that comes from the uh, the main water tank going to the farm. So we are going to look at all those, uh, so that because you know water from the main water tank goes to the farm via gravity. And we are going also to, to look at that. We are going to look at uh, some of the valves at the water tank. We are going to look at the valves that uh, usually control the water uh, that usually comes from the borehole and also from the water tank going to the farm. And of course, after the water tank, we are going to look at uh, uh, the main pipe. And the main pipe is the uh, is, is a pipe that usually uh, takes water uh, from the pipe uh, from the main water tank going to the farm and uh, we are going to look at it we look at some of the connections that usually have we look at some of the valves that usually have and some of the filtering water filtering that need to be done uh, after the main pipe we are going to look at the sub mains the sub main pi pipes these are the ones that are usually served from the main pipe and uh, this the, the sub main they are a bit shorter they are not uh, the main pipe is a bit bigger we are going to, 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 to know some of this measurement when uh, we go deeper to the details. But the sub-main 
are a bit smaller than the main pipe and these are the ones which serve the different blocks. They serve the different blocks uh, from the main pipe. And the main pipe of course has a lot of uh, water, carries a lot of water. Uh, the sub-main are a bit constricted, they are a bit smaller and therefore uh, of course you will, you will expect it to have uh, more pressure. And now uh, from uh, the main pipe, uh, from the submain, that is from the submain, that's when now you have uh, the control points and uh, we are going to look at the control points that are, are usually uh, there between now the main pipe and the submain, all the control, the valves, uh, the water filtering, we are going to see uh, how that is done. That is how you open water uh, to serve a certain block and not the others, how you can open the water to serve all the blocks and so forth. So all the controls that are there are going to be seen. Of course from the drip line, uh, from the main pipe, uh, we go to the sub-main pipe and then we go now to the drip lines. And the drip lines, as I've mentioned, they are usually connected to the sub-mains. And uh, the drip line are the ones which are layered on top of the, or which are placed on top of the bed. And uh, the drip line usually contains some holes uh, from where the water for uh, feeding the crops uh, come from, uh, comes from. And therefore, once that is done, uh, it is important to know the spacing of those holes. It is important to know the quality of this uh, drip line and also the types of this drip line. So that will be important so that you can be able to know uh, the kind of drip, drip line that are desirable for the crop that you want to, uh, to plant. And uh, from there, you're going to have uh, the connectors. Of course, uh, the drip line are connected to the sub-main. And uh, the R connectors that are usually placed, you are going to look at those connectors. You are going to look, look how you are going to connect and how you are going to, uh, to fasten. If maybe there is a drip line that you need to, uh, to block so that uh, water doesn't uh, pass through that drip line, you are going to see how you are going to do it. And of course, after we do all that, we are going to, do, to look at the bed, uh, how you prepare the bed. Because uh, you have to prepare the bed, most of the time you usually find the drip line per bed are supposed to be four of them, four drip lines. We are going to look at uh, uh, how to prepare the bed so that the drip lines fit very well on the bed. And you can be able now to plant the crop that you want to plant. And uh, most of the time, the, the size of the bed will depend on the crop that you, are, you, wanted, you want to plant. Because it will depend on the plant spacing of the plant that you want to plant on uh, that particular farm. And therefore, in terms of the crop, we, are, we, we look at uh, some of the spacing. Uh, we look at some of the types of the crop that you can be able to plant there. And uh, lastly, we look at uh, the costing. Uh, how much does it cost to prepare... Uh, to do all this setup and this is very important because uh, when you are doing this irrigation uh, it should be in a way that you are able to recoup your investment of course you are doing the irrigation then you set up the, the irrigation in your farm you plant crop and then this crop you sell and then you can be able to recoup your investment so over time uh, you're going to find uh, because uh, irrigation uh, setup is usually a long-term investment and therefore you will find that maybe within two or three seasons you would have recovered all your money and uh, the irrigation setup will be something that will remain to serve you uh, in subsequent years when you'll be planting. And it is very important when you do the irrigation uh, because uh, uh, you'll be able to even target the market in good time. If maybe uh, there's no sufficient rainfall, uh, you are able to uh, to grow your crop and also you are able to grow your crop when uh, uh, most of the people are not growing because most of the people usually time the rains then they plant their crop then that time uh, maybe you can be able to, you, you can be doing um, your own land preparation or maybe you can be uh, just letting the land to lie furrow and uh, you know to to be able to recoup the nutrients and then now when the rains are over and uh, most people are not farming then you can do the irrigation and once you do that and grow your crop you're going to find that uh, there will be no much supply in the market and hence your, your produce will be able to fetch a good price. So the cost 
is very important and that is the last thing you are going to look at in this course.